You lead well when you are leading at your best. And to lead at your best, you need to be in your sweet spot. The strengths that you have that you can bring to the organization, teaching people and getting people to come in and run and lead other parts of the business, focusing on the priorities and the things that only you can do. And today, our guest, Jacob Robinson, is going to talk all about that, how he figured out what his leadership sweet spot is and guide us into how we can do that. Before we jump in, let me tell you a little bit about my friend, Jacob Robinson. Jacob, in 2023, by Houston Business Journal, was named one of the most admired CEOs in Houston. That's pretty amazing. And he is a bit of a serial entrepreneur starting and growing businesses. What I love about what Jacob does is they are all in the service space. They do things to help people. And lately he started working in all of his love of family and bringing people together by building amusement parks. Yes, that's right. Jacob Robinson is my idea of Jesse Cole in a cowboy hat, building and buying and running amusement parks. I can't wait for him to tell you all about it. Let's dive into our conversation with Jacob Robinson and how you can lead in your sweet spot right now. Jacob, I am so glad that you are here today because uh, I really want to talk about the fact that leaders feel like they have to do everything uh, and they have to be everything and they have to be able to touch everything inside of their business, multiple businesses, their organization. And you and I were sitting down for breakfast one day and you said, hey, I am the zero to one guy and then I got to find people to help run and manage uh, whatever we build. And it just blew me away. So start telling me about this zero to one idea and how you started to figure that out. Yeah, no, man. Well, first off, thank you for letting me be here today. I'm, I'm super honored to be here. Uh, I'm super excited. I've been looking forward to this for a while. So thank you all for, for letting me be a part of it. Yeah. You, you know, the idea came, uh, I would like to say that I had this epiphany in the middle of the night one night and I woke up and it was like, oh my gosh, there's this perfect leadership saying about uh, how I'm wired. But no, it was, it was a friend of uh, both of ours, uh, Andrew Deerhead. Uh, and, and he and I were talking together, uh, one day and he said, man, you know, I, I look back at like what you've done, uh, and what you're currently mm -hmm. doing, uh, and you're a really good zero to one guy. Uh, you're not a good two to 10 guy. And, uh, I actually, I heard Louis Giglio the other day, a pastor out of Atlanta. Uh, he was on a podcast and, and he, uh, he described himself as an A to B leader and he needs mm. C to Z people on his team. Uh, and, and so, you know, we can call it zero to one, we call it A to B, whatever we want to call it. But the, the idea really is, you know, I, I'm the idea guy, right? I, I'm the idea guy. I'm the, I'm the mission guy. I'm the vision guy. Uh, I am the corraler of the team. And then frankly, a, a couple things start to happen at that point. One, uh, the, the organization or the idea or the team starts to quickly, uh, become too good. Like for me, I, I don't really have a role anymore because I, we've either put smarter people around me uh, you know, uh, go getters around me that are taking it to the next level. And I kind of get left behind or, or two, what happens is, is we really start to say, Hey, listen, that's not my skill set. Like building out, uh, an operating manual, for example, like it, 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 my brain doesn't work that way. My eyeballs will fall out all of the above. If you ask me to do an operating manual, however, we've got people on our team that they just crush it. And I love looking at it. Like when it's done, I'm going, man, how, how in the world did you come up with that? Like, I never in a million years would have seen uh, that if, if you had asked me to do it. So the idea is, is really how do we get something going? How do we get people to believe in what we're doing? And then how do I quickly as possible get out of their way? And, and I think a lot of times this adage that we've learned and, and you, you, you may say, Hey, you're, you're terrible. Uh, this is a terrible thought process, but I think a lot of people <laughs> say, Hey, you, you need to work on your weaknesses, work on your weaknesses, work on your weaknesses. Listen, I think it's great to, to acknowledge your weaknesses. Uh, and then I would argue, uh, uh, you, you, I, that's an interesting, uh, viewers can see, did you see that, that thumbs up? I, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Um, we're full uh, AI is just baked into this man. right here. That's I'll try what's not happening. To my hands as, as much, but it's, but, it's uh, a multidimensional experience. <laughs> that's right. That's right. No telling what's about to happen. Um, but, but I, I think a lot of times we, 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 we work on trying to get better at the things we're not good at and are not in the way the Lord wired us. And, and instead of leaning into the way, you know, we're designed, created, uh, the way that we can add value to an organization. Now, 
that does not mean I need to raise my hand and say, well, hey, listen, I'm not good at that. So I'm not going to do those, those five things over there. But no, really acknowledging, hey, I drive value here. You drive value here. And so when we can go out and we hire against our weaknesses and, and filling the room with smart people, you know, you, you've heard people say, make sure you're the dumbest person in the room. If you've done that, mm-hmm. you'll probably start leading really well, right? And, and, and because the ideas that these other people are going to come up with are just amazing. And so I, I've really tried to focus on who complements my weaknesses, uh, who thinks the same way I think about work and, and, and our drive and our, our goals and our mission and our vision. But really, who's who's so much smarter than me at these things that I'm terrible at? And and then at the same time, acknowledging what I can bring to the table, right? And and saying, hey, we don't need two of me. Uh, I'd mm-hmm. rather go hire somebody that that can that can work on my weaknesses. So, uh, you know, I, I've really leaned into that zero to one. Now, that doesn't mean I need to just uh, uh, you know chunk the deuce and 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 get out of town and leave all responsibilities, but rather trying to hand the keys over to the person. I, I told our general manager this the other day at one of our, our, our businesses, I said, listen, you're in charge. Like, I appreciate you calling me, but you're in charge. I, I trust you explicitly to deal with this. And I trust you that you'll make the right decision. And, and whatever decision you make, I know you've thought about it. I know you, you've weighed the pros and cons and you're going to make a decision and I'll support it because I trust her so much that, that, that she's good at what I'm not good at, that she's seeing things that I'm not seeing. And so uh, really trying to own that zero to one um, and be the, the collaborator of teams. I love building teams. I love putting people together. I love connecting people. And so that's what we tried to do. That is awesome. And that you're, you're going to turn around and you get to coach me because uh, that's one of the places where we are is uh, how, do, how do we move into that next stage uh, for us at Leadwell? But also I'm thinking about uh, CEOs that have been in their role for three years and they've kind of got it set. And now uh, they need to jump into strategy to vision. Um, somebody that just hired somebody six months ago uh, and they're getting ready to uh, offload, to pass on, to give the, the growth opportunity uh, to somebody on their team uh, to pick up some of the work. And I'm sitting here listening to all of these things and it all makes sense. And I still am like, Jacob, but they don't know what I know. Uh, They might not do it the way that I do it. And like, what do you mean you're in charge? You, you just run this, like you're still responsible for this, man. So how do you start going about getting these people? Cause I'm guessing you probably haven't hit a home run every time, at least nine out of 10 times for sure. But not every time. (laughs) <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, listen, it, it, listen, it, 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 let me be very clear. Uh, the way that we got to, to Jacob today is through a painful process, right? Like it, it, it's, it's um, learning my terrible leadership traits starting out when I was young and just wanting to just conquer the world and, and, and was scared of failing and uh, wanted just to go, 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 go. It didn't matter who was in the wake of it, team member, not team member, it didn't matter. Uh, and then a lot of it changed, you know, part of our story that, you know, after, after my son got sick and, and a lot of just my, my philosophy on life changed, right. Of how I view life. That doesn't mean I work any, uh, less hard. Uh, frankly, I probably work harder today, uh, than I did, uh, before that for a lot of reasons, but, but it, it helps frame up what's important. And that's, and so, so I think when we could start to let go of things is when we can actually hand keys over, right. I mean, that's an obvious statement, but, but one thing I've learned is. If, if, if you don't allow your team members to actually lead the organization or do the thing you've hired them to do, they will leave. And what will happen is you'll never get great talent. So what, what happens is, is this, this cycle, right? Well, this person left, so now I've got to do this again. See, I, I couldn't trust them with it. Well, did you actually give it to them? Because did you, actually, did you actually let them run with it? Because if you didn't let them run with it, yeah, I'd leave too if I were them. Right. You, you said, hey, you know, John, you hired me to do X, Y and Z. But every time I look over, you're in my business and you actually end up making the phone call before I can get there. And if you had given me five more minutes, I would have done it. Well, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to leave. Right. I've got I've got a, one of my best friends. He's working for a guy right now who cannot get out of his way. And you know what's about to happen? He's got a small team of seven people. And I bet five of them are about to leave. And the guy cannot wow. turn anything over. He hired he hired my buddy to be the COO of the company and told him you're going to do X, Y and Z. And I, and I know my buddy, and I know he's telling me the truth, and I've seen the emails, and I've heard the phone calls. Hmm. The amount of things that he's been given to do, zero. Truly given to do, zero. Because you've got this control 
on top. And again, yes, it's your baby. You get it. You know where all the dead bodies are. You know where, you know, which clients to deal with, which ones not to deal with. But listen, what's going to happen is that guy thinks he's controlling the business and he's about to lose his, his entire team. And so unless we yeah. actually give people the, the rope to fail, then, then, you know, they're going to leave us. And then we're never going to be able to build great teams. If we want to build great teams, you actually got to let the team go do something. Now, does that come with failures? Oh, yeah. Does it come with mistakes? Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, I uh, again, I, I'll reference our, our general manager the other day uh, at, at one of our businesses. We have this constant debate going on about it, one of our internal issues. And, and I, I, I say, I always follow up with, hey, you know where I stand on this, but you're in charge. And she said, you, you know what you mean when you say that. You know you're actually casting a vote, right? And I'm like, I, I know that. But I want you to know that if you go against me, I promise you I'm good with it. Like I've, 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 I've written that off in my head or, or I've, I've said, Hey, listen, I, I, I reserve the right to be right or wrong or whatever it may be. Mm. And she goes, you know, every time you say that though, you've actually, I've actually changed my opinion to what you want me to do. And we've actually ended up being right. And I'm like, well, listen, that, that's not actually the goal. I've been wrong on plenty of things. <laughs> uh, but, but if I really do believe I'm, I'm giving you the power to do it, knowing that we may fail. And here's the deal, man. Listen, w w especially when you're dealing with young people, like, and I don't think young people are bad. What, I, what I'm saying is, is, is um, um, work experience. And, and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll follow like our, our sales team. And I'm like, I would not have said it that way. So let me, let, me, let me talk to you about how we should say it this way. Did we think about this angle? And listen, people do that to me. I was just on a call with a, an executive coach, right? Like, I don't have all the answers. I asked him, how would you do X, Y, and Z? And he was going through one of our, our pitch decks. And he's like, well, why'd you say it like that? It's a great question. I actually have no idea why I said it like that. Help me figure out a better way to say it. You know, and so this is not a Jacob's figured it out. This is um, what I'm what I'm learning. I'm telling you what I'm learning as I'm going. But but listen, c control is hard, especially when it's your baby, right? It's literally it's your name, you know. And and yeah. so that's tough to let go. But you will not build the organization you want to build with awesome A plus talent unless you actually let them go do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Amen. So I think you said a really interesting thing in that sometimes the tighter we grab on and the more we try to control, the less control we actually have. Uh, That's right. Because now all of a sudden everything around it is going to change and it's going to become uncontrollable because they leave and uh, you've kind of squeezed the life out of this thing. The other thing is there you you referenced in there so much communication. Uh, it was just evident in how you're talking with your GM, this you know what, we're going to do and learn almost like a learn, do, teach type of thing where you're just out there and it's like, go do the sales call. Let's coach on it. Let's talk about these things. So communication, coaching, what are the things that you are trying to do in that chief leader role, owner role, executive role, and as one that says, I'm going to focus on the things that only I can do, but I also need to help, what would you call it, lead, teach, coach for the other things? Like what are the things that you are focusing on to make sure it keeps moving on the tracks the way you are envisioning it moving? Yeah. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with that right now, trying to figure out like my exact role and what that looks like. What does that look like on, on reporting structure? What does it look like on meeting structure? Uh, what does it look like on what reports I actually want to see or which ones I actually could care less to see, you know, and, and am I actually making just somebody have a meeting for the sake of a meeting? I, I don't subscribe to that. You know, I, I, I have tried my best. I'll say it this way. I've tried my best to constantly communicate to my team what I'm doing. And, and not that I owe it to anybody to explain what I'm doing. But if you know what I'm doing, then one, it shows you that I'm not doing your job uh, behind your back. Two, it, it, it lets everybody know, hey, this is what Jacob does. Jacob goes and does X, Y, and Z. And I need the rest of the team to do their job. And, and so if I'm communicating with you what I'm doing, and what I am not going to do, then that helps pick up the slack of what your expectation is, right? And, and I'm, I'm very upfront from the beginning. Hey, listen, I'm going over here. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. So therefore, you've got to do X, Y, and Z, right? So I, 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 think, I think that's part of it. Uh, that's part of it. Uh, the other thing is um, I, I want to create an environment where I want every team member to know I'm good with you failing. I'm good with it. Like, I genuinely mean I'm good with it. And, and I think once we, like, if we actually give that away, that's when we can actually see growth in, in them, but also we can have the opportunities mm -hmm. to coach or we can question, Hey, why did we do it this way? What were we thinking? Uh, walk me through why you did that. And a lot of times you'll get an idea go, 
Yeah, it's a fantastic idea. Never would have thought about that. Um, yeah. and, and what it does, is it creates the freedom for them to push back as well. Um, and, and I'm trying not to jump in and be, be a parachute you know, leader where I actually, I, I say you can go do it, but then at the last second, I'm going to jump in and I'm just going to fix it. Um, and so I, I think a lot of it's creating that environment to fail and knowing that when you pick up the phone, you call me and, I'm a, and you tell me you just made a colossal mistake. I'm not going to shoot you out. I'm going to go, okay, how are we going to fix it? And let's, let's go mm-hmm. on from there. But, but that's an evolution, right? Like, like that was not Jacob like in, in, in 2017 or earlier, right? Uh, 2017, mm-hmm. like I keep saying is when my son got sick, that changes how I, I view everything, right? Like there are bigger yeah. fish in this world to fry and there are bigger problems in this world than did we just lose in an account. Now, does that mean your business might go under? Maybe. But do we still have our family? Do we still have our faith? Do we still have those important things? Yeah. If we have those things, then man, it's just a work problem. It's just a work problem. Yeah. And and so I think that, but that's an evolution. That's an evolution uh, that has come over the last few years the hard way. Yeah. Uh, for I mean, all of those, right? It's like, I, I think everybody that we talk to that has a significantly different perspective has a massive crisis, kind of a wilderness where I'm lost or just something that has completely blindsided them that forces them to change. And you, you reference that, uh, your son, uh, kind of life changing perspective. Uh, you referenced a coach and a good friend speaking in and saying, man, this is where I see you winning. Um, uh, talk through some of the other components that kind of pulled you through there. Uh, because yeah. like we said, there's the idea that uh, if I'm the leader, I got to do everything. I got to touch everything. If I don't even have the answer, the moment that my board, my investor, this team member says X, like, well, then I, I'm a fraud or I'm not good enough or I'm not supposed to be there. Like that's a, it's a very long process to get to the place where you can say, here are my priorities. Here's what I'm good at. And here's all of the things that I need help with. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I battle the imposter syndrome daily. Uh, and it's, it's not even really daily. It's probably hour by hour, right? Of going, no, no, no. I, I belong here. I belong in this room. Uh, you and I were saying the, the dinner we were at, uh, yep. you know, uh, yep. a couple of weeks ago. How on God's green earth are we sitting in this room, right? Like, but it's, if they actually knew, right? You know, kind of, kind of deal. And, and so. Well, let's be uh, real. We did not belong in that room. Uh, it was grace right. uh, and generosity that got us That's in exactly that room. Right. That's exactly And right. it was right. wonderful. That's exactly <laughs> right. We absolutely did not belong in that room uh, by a lot of definition. But, but, but yeah. I think it's, it's sitting there and, and man, working through this process to get comfortable with who you are. Right. And, and I think, I think for me, like we, we reference our, the, the guy I was talking to, I think that clarity of zero to one and then owning that and say, Hey, this is how, this is who I am. I, I'm not my other buddies. I'm not, um, uh, you know, this leader that I want to aspire to be. Right. Uh, and I, I deal with a lot. I, I, I look at people where I want to go and I go, man, they did it like this and I'm not doing it like that. And, and so then I struggle with, well, am I ever going to be there? Right. And, and I think, you know, you and I talked about this. I, I, I don't, like, I think we've got to get clear on what we're even defining the, like, what, what's the scoreboard? You know, like I, sometimes I get lost. Like, I'm not even sure what the scoreboard is. And, and if I, if I don't know what the scoreboard is, I don't, I don't know what game I'm playing. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. I mean, do you want a high score or low score? I'm not sure if, if I don't know what game I'm playing. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I think that's what I struggle with. But, but I, so I think I say that from a point of struggling to go, the good days, the days that I feel like I'm, I'm doing well is when I'm living in exactly how I'm, I'm wired to be. And, there, and there's uh, some books I've read. There's, there's people I've talked to allowing people to, to, to give me good, honest, loving feedback of saying, Hey, you are not, I don't need you to go do X, Y, and Z. I need you to do exactly what you're, you're doing right now. Now, yes, there's times where you need to jump in and you need to sit through doing a, you know, an operating manual or, or something like that, where like, that's not your skill set. But, but overall, no, you, you, it's better for the organization if you're not doing those things um, and, and, and being confident in that and not that I have to have all the answers. And I, I had a, 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 one of my business partners, he told me one time, he said, man, we got to get really good at going, yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. It's a great question. I'll figure it out and I'll get back to you. And, and I think, you know, whether it's being young or it's probably actually, it's probably anybody, but especially when you're raising money or you're casting a vision of business and they, and they got those questions, not that it's like even a gotcha question. It's a question where you're like, oh, I never thought about that. Or actually, I don't know the answer. That's a unique question. We're so prone to try to figure out the answer on the fly, right? Because we don't want to be, yeah. we don't want to be caught or we don't want to 
you know, somebody go, oh my gosh, this kid doesn't know what he's talking about. I've gotten more positive feedback from people when I go, you know, actually, I don't know. It's a great question. Let me get back to you tonight on that. And they go, okay, sounds good. I, I, I have yet to encounter the person that goes, you don't know the answer to that question. If you don't know the answer to that question, then get out of my office, right? I've, I've yet to, to find that person out there. And so um, I think it's uh, this, this evolution of, of, of figuring out how you're wired, how God's wired you, and, and being super confident in that. Now, I say all that to say I've got to get better at being super confident in that on a daily basis. I, I don't sit here uh, mastering that yet, but I know what I need to be. I know what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that is so powerful that the lie that we tell ourselves is that we have to give an answer for people to think we know what we're talking about. When really, if we say, I don't know, let me get back to you. We gain so much trust and respect because everybody can tell when it's a BS answer anyways. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And I think, I think not only like to like investors or board, but man, to people that, that quote unquote report to us or our team members, I think if we can say it to those people, I think that that, that shows them, oh, okay, it's great. They were modeling, right? Like we're because I don't want them to BS an answer to me. I, I don't want to turn around and say, hey, yeah. is the number this or this? And they go, well, this one, hold on. I, I'd rather you go, I have to I have no idea. Let me do some research. I'll get back to you. I don't want you to make it up. And so if I can show the humility of going, I don't know, it's a great question. Let's figure that out. Um, I think, I think we've gotten, and probably we've always dealt with this as a society, but we, we've got this uh, mentality that we have to have it all buttoned up. And, that, and that, that transcends outside of work too. I think in life, I think raising kids, I think being friends with people, I think, you know, uh, managing your finances, I, all, all of these things, I think we'd be better off to go, I actually have no clue. And uh, I'm, I'm all ears. So I'm, I'm trying to learn that in every facet of my life. Yeah. F FIO, figuring it out is a good place to be. And uh, I know uh, that you have a lot of things that you do extremely well uh, that you can and need to be confident in. And one of them is the thing that I just absolutely love. And I picture in my brain uh, you as Jesse Cole from Savannah Bananas as a cowboy uh, going and doing amusement parks. So I hope Hell. that you live into my vision of uh, the cowboy amusement park, Jesse yes. Cole personification. Uh, yes. this, is, this is what I'm hoping for. But please, can you tell us about uh, amusement parks and Dig World and the fact that you 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 have a, a company that is going to uh, purchase and run and, and make amusement parks and entertainment a part of your business portfolio. So uh, tell us all that you want to tell us, because this is yeah. so much fun. Well, man, listen, uh, you just probably gave me one of the highest confidence I've ever been given. So if, if I can, you know, I'll start telling people I'm the zero to one guy and I'm Jesse Cole with a cowboy hat. I'm, I'm, I am good uh, with that comparison by, by, uh, by a lot. Je uh, Jesse Cole, like, like John said, the owner of Savannah Bananas, I, his book, Fans First, highly recommend. Everybody needs to read it. Um, and just really how he's revolutionized the game of baseball and and how he's created this fans first experience and, and loves on people so highly highly recommend uh that book uh but uh you know I, i've referenced a couple of times now my son got sick my son got sick in 2017 he contracted bacterial meningitis they left him uh with permanent disabilities uh and he's got a whole host of issues uh now uh but he is a happy joyful little dude but you know he's he's permanently disabled and he's in a wheelchair and nonverbal and epileptic and you know, deaf in both ears and, you know, the list goes on and on. But one of the things uh, that he always has loved uh, pre getting sick and post is construction equipment, garbage trucks, dump trucks, uh, the whole nine yards. Uh, and so we, we stumbled across this opportunity of a theme park. It's, it's up in New Jersey where they let kids operate real construction equipment. And so we said, man, if that's a real thing, we need to do that in Texas and we need to do it because Pierce loves construction equipment. And, and you know what, at the end of the day, let's figure out a way to bring families together and and family can mean a lot of things right let's free, let's bring friends together let's let's bring cousins together let's bring college roommates together let's bring just people together uh and have a good time and and really show them what what we you know I, i'm i'm a, a believer in, in jesus and and we want to show them the gospel um without without hitting them over the head with the bible and we want to meet people right where jesus would meet people and love them that's the name of the game and oh by the way we get to do it at a theme park and so uh, we set out to build a theme park where we let kids operate real construction equipment. And so it's, it's based here in Katy, Texas. Can, uh, can you describe real construction equipment? Because yeah. I am thinking of 
Oh yeah, we had those little sandboxes where it was like three yeah. feet tall, and I got to pull right. the little arms on the crane and do this thing. And um, my friends, that's not what Jacob is talking about. <laughs> that's right. We are talking about real uh, mini excavators that you see on the side of the road every single day digging ditches. And we're talking about real skid steers that you see on the side of the road moving dirt around. Uh, these are full blown machines. Uh, we've obviously re engineered them uh, to where they're safe, but we let kids as young as three years old operate them by themselves. And they can dig dirt, they can play games and try to move objects around, they can drive the skid steer around the windy track. We've got some other things out there at the park. But, but we opened it in March of 2022. Uh, and, I, and we knew nothing. We knew nothing about theme parks. Uh, and that showed uh, in the first few months. Uh, we've been paying the price ever since. But, um, but what we did find is that, man, I, I love when people are out there. I love seeing the smiles on their faces. Uh, and I love letting them just take a break for a minute from the, from the world. And, 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 you know, it, it really is, it is unique. Like it's a humbling opportunity where we've said this about our, our company that I'll talk about in a second. We, we get to be in a space uh, that truly uh, ingrains memories into a family's memory bank. Like th there's a lot of great things in the world and, and there's a lot of great businesses in the world and, and there's a lot of great people in the world. But, but if you think back about your family and your, and your life, there's, there's things that you reference, right? And a lot of times they're trips and a lot of vacations or, or theme parks you went to. And we get to be the holder of those memories uh, for people. And that's like, that's a huge honor and a huge blessing. And so we, we felt like there was an opportunity in the theme park space uh, across the country. So think middle market theme parks. So think your regional roller coasters, uh, your, your, your bigger rides, not Six Flags, not the big, 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 big stuff. But kind of that middle. You're not going to purchase thing. Disney at any not, time soon. Not nothing like that. Soon. Now, if Bob <laughs> Iger wants to call next week, we can we can talk prices. But um, <laughs> but but that 10 million to 100 million revenue range. And so we're we're out there pursuing theme parks, water parks, um, other attractions, kind of like a Dig World uh, resorts. And, and what we're really doing is we're trying to we're, we're, we want to show people Jesus, uh, but we, we're going to do it through the theme parks. And and uh, it's a really unique asset class. I, I was not, I'm not a theme park guy. I didn't grow up going to theme parks. I'm actually scared of heights. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but what I've found is this awesome opportunity and, and, yeah. and where we get to really invest in the community, invest in the employees and, and we, we get to in, in, invest in those assets. And so these are a lot of times they're family owned. They've been owned for a really long time. Like one of the, one of the parks we're looking at has been owned in the same family since 1924. And, oh and so goodness. we get to help wow. sh shepherd that to the next, the next, you know, era. Um, and one's been owned since the, I think, 1890. It's a long time, long time. Um, oh my goodness. Before theme parks so, even existed. <laughs> that's exactly right. Exactly right. Uh, and so we, we, that's what we're building. Uh, and, and we want to kind of operate in that middle market space uh, of owning theme parks and water parks across the country. And, you know, and, and we get to, it's really unique on who we get to hire too, right? Like we get to hire kids starting at like 15, 16 years old, all the way up to, you know, people that will be career people at our company. And that's really awesome. Like if you think about like, there might be a kid out there that works for us when they're 16 and the way that we set our culture, our, our standards, our leadership, wh whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And that shapes the trajectory of their life. That's awesome. Yeah. Like that, that's, if we get yeah. to be a catapult into their story, man, that's super awesome. Super humbling. So anyways, uh, I am turning into your theme park guy. So Jesse Cole's the Savannah banana guy. Uh, this, I am. Turning happening. I am. I am getting you a, a very large yes. uh, cowboy hat. This is yes. uh, not even normal size. Like it's just everything's bigger in Texas, and I want That's you right. to be uh, ridiculously awesome uh, and wear it to uh, any any event that you go to that has Absolutely. to do with the theme parks. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I may oh. I may have to take it off in the airport. Uh, he, I think he wears his yellow tuxedo all the way through the airport, but uh, but so he may be tougher than I am. Uh, so, he, hey, you know, it it actually, it's like, it interesting, right? Like uh, going back to what we just talked about, what's interesting about him is he talks about his book, man, that's who he was. Like, that's who he wanted to be. And and he said he had, he had to even get comfortable wearing his yellow tuxedo through the airport because he thought people were going to look at him. So I say, I say, I say like, encouragement is, man, people that we idolize and we look up to and we aspire to be, they, they're struggling with the same things. And if we're all just honest with yeah. ourselves, right, we, we can all can encourage each other a little bit better. Yeah. Well, I, I hope that everybody's encouraged by Jacob's story and really to lead in your sweet spot and that you get there by getting really clear and really comfortable with the value that you bring with what you need from other people, 
with the priorities that you have in life and in work and then inviting people in. And just like y'all say in Dig World, hey, we are all always under construction. Right. And uh, and so to anybody that's listening, you have to come to Dig World. Uh, you have to connect with Jacob and I. Uh, we yes. will do dinner uh, and we will play around on machines that we have no business playing around on. That's exactly uh, and it right. would be awesome. Uh, so Jacob, before I let you go, uh, we are on the Leadwell podcast. And I have to ask you, what does it mean to you to lead well? It's mm, a good question. Uh, you know, I, I thought about uh, that question. I, I would say uh, to love people, and 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 I think uh, if we truly set out to love people like Jesus did, um, I listened to a, a book one time, and this guy said, you know, uh, he was sitting with a, a local pastor of a homeless ministry, and this person came in and was talking to him, and he said, I looked at that person, I looked at that pastor, looked at that person, and he saw a soul that Jesus created, and and it was worth dying for. And, and I, I think if we can love people, no matter the backgrounds, no matter the baggage they bring to the table, no matter their flaws as an employee or a coworker or a guest or whoever it may be, but if we can love people well, uh, then I think we become a better leader. So that, that's, that's what I aspire to do. Uh, I'm trying to get better and better at it. Love people well, to lead people well. Jacob Robinson, thank you so much for being a guest on here. Everybody, you can find out more about DigWorld at digworldtx.com. Uh, and we will put that and uh, some ways to connect with Jacob, as including uh, his podcast that he's a co-host, uh, Chasing What Matters. Uh, we will put all of that in the show notes. My friend, uh, thank you for doing this, for your generosity and being here. You are an absolute pleasure and a joy. And, uh, and I can't wait to follow my own uh, Jesse Cole Cowboy uh, wherever he's going. So thank you, Jacob. I love it. Thanks for letting me be here, brother. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Everybody else, be well, lead on, and God bless.